forecasts suggest that we're going to need more than 50 percent more food production to feed the world's people by 2050. Some of those numbers go as high as 70 percent more food production. We're already using a third of the planet, the planet's surface, to produce food. And it's a reasonable question to ask how much more of the planet we can convert to farmland. Our food production processes have to become much more efficient if we're going to meet that demand. MIT has strengths in a number of things that might give you unexpected gains in food. I'll give you an example. Uh, we've had a program uh, at the Institute for Soldier Nanotechnology that has dealt with, among other things, chemical sensing because uh, they're concerned about chemical weapons. But it turns out that the sensors that have been developed in that context are also useful for detecting the ripening of food while it's sitting in a container or the rotting of food as it's shipped around. These sensors that have been developed uh, by Professor Swagger uh, actually pro provide the opportunity to improve the distribution of food so that you can reduce waste and spoilage along the supply chain. As it happens, food waste is an enormous part of the world's uh, food supply problem. It's estimated that the amount of food wasted worldwide is four times the amount that would be needed to feed all of the hungry people on the planet. So it's when we get people from different disciplines thinking together, we come up with radically new ideas and new approaches to these problems. We have found in our studies of water supply, for example, that uh, you know, the initial take is that water is an old problem. We know how to put pipes in the ground and pump things from place to place, and maybe there's not a lot new to be done. But when you connect people who are thinking about water to people who are thinking about new materials or new sensors or new separation processes, you find that you get a synthesis where putting these two people together develops a new approach to uh, such a problem. We've seen this, for example, when people who think about uh, fabrication of graphene uh, start thinking about desalination and they realize that they can perforate these graphene membranes in selective ways so as to produce a new type of desalination membrane that has much higher flux. We see this when we have people who think about uh, wireless communications looking at a water distribution network and they realize they can put low power wireless sensors all around the network to integrate the data to collect pressure signals that will actually tell them where the leaks in the pipe are located. Our objective with the World Water and Food Security Laboratory is to harness the talent I described and to bring those abilities to bear on the pressures that are facing us in water supply and food supply as world population grows, as the climate warms, as development occurs worldwide, and as more people live in cities. It's our hope that by bringing our unique abilities to these problems, we will be able to make a difference to uh, what, it, what is, in my opinion, the largest challenge facing humankind in the next century, adequate water and adequate food.